this is Rich Lavens of Eurotherm by Watlow. And uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to quick start one of the Eurotherm EPC 3000 series controllers. Um, this particular one is the EPC 3004. And in short, when you take a new control out of the box, you are going to see um, what we call a quick code. And it's a quick way to set up the controller with just a few uh, button pushes. So uh, I'm going to post the uh, installation sheet on a video after this. So you'll be able to look at that and uh, download the link for it. But in short, our first digit here sets up the application of the controller. So if I go to one, it's PID heat. If I go to two, PID cool. Three, or the third selection is a V, that's for valve position. Um, and the D is dew point. And some of these, you may see some other ones in there depending on how you ordered the controller. So for example, you could see a C in there, which means you've ordered a carbon control unit. But anyway, for our application, we're going to set this up as a heat only. We're going to hit the enter button. And the second digit is the, uh, the type of sensor input. So again, using the up down key, we can scroll through a bunch of different thermocouples, four to twenties and whatnot. But for our application, let's just set this up for a type J. We'll hit enter. The third field is the range. So if I use the up down keys again, um, one is zero to 100 degrees C, two is zero to 200 degrees C and so forth. And it'll show this uh, a little bit better on the sheet. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Or you can just go what we call full scale. So in this case, I'm gonna go full scale. Enter again. The fourth digit is if you have a second input uh, sensor option. So in my case, I do have a second input sensor. So I'm going to set it up the same. So we'll set type J. And again, we'll go Fahrenheit, or not Fahrenheit, but full scale. So when I hit the enter key here, now it goes to the second set. And the second set has to do with, at least in this case, the first digit is a current transformer input. So we can go 1 is 0 to 10, 2 is 0 to 25, 5 is 0 to 50, 6 is 0 to 100, and 7 is 0 to 1000. So that's if you're going to use the current transformer. If you're not, you can simply leave it as X and hit the Enter key. The next one is your digital inputs. So the EPC 3008 and 3004 come with two digital inputs. So again, using up, down, W is alarm acknowledge, M is auto manual, R is run hold, L is a key lock, P is a set point select, T is reset, U is local remote set point, V is recipe select, and K is loop track. So in our case, um, I'm going to set that as alarm acknowledge. And the next one is kind of the same thing. So we can run through, we'll see exactly the same parameters. I'm not gonna set the second digital up. So we're gonna leave it as X, go to the fourth one. And the fourth one is, um, um, if you have it so equipped, there's digital inputs on the back of this one. And again, these are if you're going to set it up for uh, events in a ramp soak programming environment. In this case, I'm not going to set it up. So we're going to skip to the last one. And the last one is your units of measurement. So I have Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. Or I can leave it blank, but we're going to set it up for Fahrenheit. And we're going to hit Enter. Now it's going to say, do you want to exit or not? In our case, yes. That's going to save it. And you can either hit the enter key, or if you wait a second, it'll just reboot. Then we get to our communication setup. So we're going to hit enter. So S prot, if you wait, it'll scroll that uh, parameter full name down here, but it's the serial protocol. I'm not going to do anything with that. 
And here's Modbus Slave. Again, by the up-down keys, you could have Modbus Master. Again, some of this depends on how you ordered it, but I'm going to leave it as none. And then we're going to go to our Ethernet protocol. So on the back of this unit, I have an Ethernet port. If you ordered it that way, you can set up the Ethernet. So in this case, I do want to use Ethernet as a Modbus slave unit. Enter. Auto discovery. I usually turn that on. If you're ever going to scan over Ethernet, you want to have basically your communications enabled. So we're going to turn that on. Enter. And we're going to exit again. A quick reboot. So now we set up the controller functions and we set up the communications protocol. And it boots up from here. So we've got our process value on the top. It's in manual mode. I can use F1 to toggle between that as a default. If you want to repurpose these two function keys, you certainly can. And so process value, set point. And now it's saying comms password. So we are going to jump to iTools for that. All right, so we're at the PC now, and we're going to open up the iTools program. So this is a free download from our watlo.com or urotherm.com website. And once downloaded, you'll see a folder called Urotherm iTools, and we want to select iTools Engineering Studio. Take a moment here to open. Now I'm going to uh, connect, or I have connected, uh, to that EPC 3004 over Ethernet. So what we're going to do here is I've got my Ethernet cable connected. We're going to hit this Add button. And you can see here, that is my instrument. So we're going to click that, and we're going to hit OK. And what you'll be prompted to do is to set that communication password. So um, if you have Ethernet, this is what you're going to have to do. So in my case, I'm going to make it EPC3004 exclamation point. Don't forget this. If you forget the password, you will not be able to get into the engineering level of that controller. So I'll also show you another trick. We're going to take this. And we're going to copy it real quick. So anyway, that's what I want to make it. We're going to apply it to the controller itself. And it'll take a second. And there's some uh, parameters. You have to have an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and a special digit. So here's my controller. And it was successful. So we're going to hit OK. If I come over to this graphical wiring page up here and click it, you will see the internal function block layout of this controller. Now, this could vary a little bit depending on your application. But my little hack is if I come over to this comment block, I'm going to drag a comment block out onto that screen, and I'm going to put comms password, and I'm going to put that in there. So this comment block is going to be stored in the controller, but you can't see any of these notes from the controller itself. You can only see those via iTools. So um, in most cases, an operator is not going to be using iTools, so he can, he can look around all day for a password from the buttons of the controller. He won't see that. But when I hit it here, this little cube up here basically is the save button, download wiring to instrument. You can see my comment is now in there. So from a supervisor or engineering level standpoint, um, you could scan a controller uh, and you will see the password. So now if I happen to log out up here in my access mode, Give it a second here. All right, so we put that controller back into operated level. So uh, I got a controller, I bring it over my desk, and I, I scan, and it pops up this. 
and I want to make a change, the minute I go to access, guess what it asks me for? That password. If you don't know it, you can't get into it. If you kind of have it here, again, you gotta, you'll have to make a, a, an informed decision whether you want to put this here or not. Again, it's my little hack, uh, which works most of the time, but may not be appropriate, you know, for your application. So, you know, just with a word of caution there. So we're going to put an EPC 3004 exclamation point, And I typed it in wrong. And there we go. Now we're back into that configuration level. So anyway, I hope you find this uh, video helpful. I'll post the link to that install sheet with the, um, the, you know, the X's that we did on the controller as to fill in the quick start. And uh, please let us know what you think. Thank you.